DA in the Eastern Cape is holding its elective congress today. So let's get you a sense of how things are unfolding there. Our reporter, Sipo Setu, um, boy, yes, it's part of our team watching the story, joining us now live from Kabecha. And uh, proceedings began a few hours ago, Sipo Setu. It's considered to be a very heated contest. How are things unfolding? Yes, of course, uh, Yada, and we are in Khrofrenets, but not in Kabecha. Plus, minus right, two hours away. And uh, it's been quite uh, interesting, polite, uh, to say the least. Everything seems to be in place as far as uh, preparations are concerned. We do know that the top two contenders for the provincial leadership uh, position are Andrew Whitfield and Chantal. Uh, so we will be seeing who actually takes that position. But I'm joined now by the outgoing provincial leader, uh, Mr. Ngaba Panga, former Nelson Mandela Bay Mayor as well. Mr. Panga, thank you very much for your time this morning. Please take us through the emotion. You delivered your last speech, spoke on a number of interesting points, especially the issue of race, as you mentioned, that it tends to create a tense uh, moment or rather a tense situation in and around the issue of race. Please speak to us um, about the importance of those type of conversation, especially when it comes to a party like the Democratic Alliance, who many would say that it's, it's mostly representing uh, a different race to the vast majority of the races in South Africa. Speak to us about that. Uh, part of what I was saying is that what we need to have a conversation about is how to build a truly non-racial society. In, in doing that, we must be able to face the difficulties uh, when you go uh, towards achieving that kind of pro project. Amongst the issues that you cannot uh, deny is, is the gap between the rich and the poor. That how do we address that all our people, regardless of the color of their skin, we are able to close that gap and make sure that all our people are empowered to make sure that my children, Sbase and Oliva and Andrew's children, can live in a society where they can compete together without uh, being labeled on the basis of color of skin. That's a society ideally Helen Sussman and all our Tambo wanted to achieve. An idea that we live as people, not as race. But there are difficult conversations that we cannot avoid the issue of race in South Africa. It cannot be limited to white people only. There are black people who are racist. Therefore, we must be able to confront those realities and have a frank conversation. That how do we discuss building a non-racial society together in South Africa? I mean, the Eastern Cape is a, a poor, marginalized society. The vast majority of the people, especially in Khrafenet and also just surrounding areas in the Eastern Cape, are poor. So how has the DA, or rather, how would you want the DA to actually just help in closing that gap uh, that you also stated and boldly said, that it's a result of the ANC government? What we need to do, uh, I've been traveling to small towns throughout the province. The bedlock and the collapse of the infrastructure structure of small towns, like I've been in Tata, I've been in Arwa North, Dodra, Queenstown. That's why people are revolting in Queenstown. Because the whole system of infrastructure and services have just collapsed. And Tata was a beacon of hope uh, uh, of the former Transkai, not under the ANC government. People in Tata would respect us to go to town and enjoy because it's something in the place that they enjoy. The ANC have just destroyed them. have destroyed uh, Bazaar, have destroyed Queenstown, destroyed Dremstown. Now, should we be apologetic about that? Is that the ANC have destroyed some of the things that the past have developed. Instead of building them, destroyed them, like children destroying glasses. And also, Mr. Panga, please speak to us in terms of maybe what the reason is behind uh, the, the motion or rather the, 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 the system of how people uh, generally just think that the DA actually just caters for a certain group of people. Why is it seen like that? Why is it not a party that any other uh, resident or member of the citizenship of South Africa would say that it's a party that speaks to all South Africans. You spoke about the issue of emotion. The DA needs to put in more emotion that could make many of the residents relate to it emotionally more than having a good system. Please speak to us about how they can actually achieve that. And also just uh, heading to the elections in 2024, how can that actually help the DA uh, to put in more emotion and be more accessible to some of those people? The South Africans... Um when they vote, they are like a spouse, in particular the black middle class, because black middle class can see the good that the DA is doing. They like it. They like the idea that 
we are prosper, prosperous in government so we can. But they are like an abused spouse. Who's afraid to detach in a relationship that is abusive? And very scared about a new relationship. They decide to stick with what is abusing them. Therefore, that's a problem that South Africans are, are making, which is destroying our country. Now, what we need to do as a DA is that we have to make sure that we inspire that confidence that there can be a detachment from an abusing spouse, which is the ANC, to a new relationship that you will discover, a good man, that is going to love you, respect you, and hold you with emotions. And that's the DA. We are going to attach those emotions to make sure that people understand that the DA is a caring party, because the DA is a caring party. That's how we deliver services. That's how we deliver quick services. But South Africans have to make sure that we cry with them. We attach emotions with them. We, we, we play with them and we dance with them. And South Africans, I'm telling you, in 2024, they are going to vote for the DA. Mr. Banga, you are taking a step back as far as politics are concerned. Now, please speak to us about your plans. Are we seeing you uh, in provincial positions in the DA, or are you just uh, taking a complete break from the party? Are we seeing you around? What's the conversation? Are you going to become an activist? Speak to us more about the plans um, that you now have just after leaving your position as the provincial leader here in, in the Eastern Cape. Look, um, uh, what I've uh, done is that it, it was not a one-day decision. It's been a processed decision. That leaders must know, good, a good dancer knows when to leave the stage. I think you can say I can dance, you know. But secondly, is that I'm a political animal, I'm a political activist. But I've lived my life in politics since I was very young. I can't be a politician and die a politician, I mean. I have to diversify my activities. There are uh, new things that I'm going to be involved in. But what hurt me the most, which changed my mind, is the fact that my niece was killed in a massacre of eight people. And the people I know, they were killed. And many people in the Eastern Cape, and what happened in Tata. And I felt, I can't be turning my back on my people, on the time of difficulty when the country was going down. And I re-looked re re into my idea. That's why I'll be contesting as a deputy federal a chairperson of the DA in the, in the federal uh, conference. Are you confident that uh, the Eastern Cape can be governed by the DA come 2024? Yeah, the DA was very driven to smash this year. Big municipalities in the Eastern Cape that are successful, the best performing municipalities under the DA. Therefore, I'm confident that under Andrew Whitfield, uh, Whitfield or Chantel, um, um, uh, uh, we are going to be able to take over. I'll be behind them. Uh, I'll be going with them wherever they go. I'll be supporting them because Chantel and Andrew are good people and I know that they have a vision. Anyone who wins is going to take us forward. And that was, of course, um, outgoing uh, Ayanda, uh, DA provincial leader in the Eastern Cape, Mr. Ngaba Banga, speaking to us about his plans and also what he hopes that uh, the DA will achieve should it take uh, governance here in the Eastern Cape. Furthermore, Ayanda, uh, the strongest contender at this particular position that uh, Mr. Banga is actually uh, leaving is, seems as though it is Mr. Andrew Whitfield. So it's between Chantal and Andrew Whitfield. We wait and see. Uh, who will actually take this position. Mr. John Steenhazen uh, is also inside. Helen Zilla is also here. And the DHF, we perceive you, Ekwahube, uh, here at the Congress in Khrafrenet.